today we'll have a look into some Strava insights from the Prudential Ride London 160km Sportive held on July 30th this year. Just under 13,000 records on Strava public leaderboards, so quite a massive amount of information to go through, and here's the details. Participation wise, we have 83.5% male, 13.8% female, 2.7% unlisted. Power meter usage was at 9.27%. The average power for those with power meters on the day was 160 watts. Heart rate monitor usage was at 44.5%. No guesses why there, they're a lot cheaper and a lot easier to set up than power meters. But it's also valid to have both. If you buy a power meter, don't throw your heart rate monitor away. It's really handy to have both sources of information. One is what you're doing, that's your power meter, and the other is the response to what you're doing, your heart rate monitor. So very handy to have both pieces of information there. The average heart rate for those with heart rate monitors on was 145 beats a minute and the average speed of 28.2 kilometers. So they're the averages for the finishes of the 160 kilometer event there in Ride London. If you're going out for training rides and you're building up to this, maybe look at those numbers as a bit of an indicator of where you need to be to finish on average. Again, your mileage may vary based on your height, weight, and a number of other factors, but that's ballpark. On to the interesting stuff, the devices used. This is where it all began for me, looking at this data. No question, hands down, Strava iPhone app takes the cake 23.1%, far and above the most popular app to use to record the event and upload it, obviously, to Strava. Coming in second there, again, no real surprises there. The Garmin Edge 1000, the Edge 1000 is a bigger unit, used quite a bit for sportives and Audaxes um, because it's got bigger screens, better mapping, and you can see the information a lot bigger there for tourers, I guess. The Garmin Edge 520, if this unit isn't on top, it's definitely top three for nearly every cycling event in the world. The Edge 520 is the current leader, even if it's not number one here across the board, it's always really, really high up there. The 810 coming in in fourth place, the Garmin Edge 810. Let me have a chat about the 810. That's getting on in years now. If you're an owner of an 810, Watch your battery life. You can get third-party batteries and replace those, but if you're only getting four or five or six hours out of that device, that's a lot less than what you'd get out of it new. Maybe start looking sideways at other alternatives there. Other alternatives, the Edge 820, not doing too well at the moment. The 820's been out for a year. Not even half the market share of the old 810. Uh, the Edge 800 next. Again, watch your battery life. I've had to replace the battery in my 800 to get a little bit more life out of it. It's a bit of a technical process, but it can be done. Then we've got the 510, the 500, and hello, someone's on a charge, the Element Bolt. Uh, 286 of these devices in my sample set, which is quite impressive for the Bolt. The Bolt's only been out a few months now. And then we go to the uh, Garmin Phoenix, the Forerunners, the Edge 25 smaller units, Vivo Active, and all of the devices will be on gplama.com, so knock yourself out with all the full details there. So no real surprises there from the Ride London data, but always very interesting information to see the top 10 and those averages across the board to uh, maybe train up for an event like that if you're a first timer. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with more.